from Algiers of Technology and Engineering. In today's session, we are going to discuss about a subject called Automobile System Design. In this particular subject, we will be going to discuss about design and construction of lip spray. In previous session, we have gone through those introductory session of that lip spray. Today, we are going to derive different equations for this lip spring. Basically, lip spring is a nothing but a load carrying component of our vehicle, which could be designed in two ways. It could be considered as a, a cantilever beam as well as it could consider as a simply supported beam. So, in that case, we will going to design our lip spring in two ways. One is by simply supported beam, and second is by uh, cantilever beam. After that, we will going to establish the relationship between load carrying capacity of master lift and load carrying capacity of gradual lifts. As we have discussed in previous session, that first two lifts or first lift is called as a master lift or a main lift or a first lift, whereas other lifts are called as a gradual lift. So master lift comes under maximum amount of stress, whereas gradual lifts comes under uh, considerably, considerably lower stress compared to master lift. So, in this session, we will going to have that uh, equation, how to select the number of master lift and number of gradual lift at the same time, what amount of load will going to act upon our master lift and gradual lift. Our goal is to find load carrying capacity for maximum deflection of our lip spring. Clear? I hope you understand our goal. So, first of all, let's discuss about what is this consideration of this lip spring. So, as you know that lip spring are also known as a fat, flat spring made up of flat plates. The advantage of lip spring over helical it that it could guide along as well as uh, it could guide along in different or lateral uh, movement of our vehicle. It can also absorb the lateral uh, suspension effect at the same time it could, it could considered as a structural component of our uh, vehicle. Because the lip spring may carry lateral loads, braking torque, driving torque, in addition to different types of shocks. So ultimately, lip spring considered as a structural part of our vehicle. Okay? Here, we are considering lip spring as a cantilever beam. In that case, we are considering lip spring from the center U-bolt joint as I have told in previous session, length under the U-bolt is considered as ineffective length of our lip spring. So, ultimately, the effective length will be considered which is exception from that U-bolt length. Clear? So, I have considered this cantilever beam from the center of our U-bolt uh, as well as by subtracting that length of U-bolt from that center. Clear? So, ultimately, this is half length which is L, full length is 2L. Clear? That is 2L is total effective length, L is half effective length. Whereas B is called thickness of our plate, uh, sorry, width of our plate and T is called thickness of our plate. So, first of all, we are going to discuss about what amount of bending stress will come across to our lip spring. So, as we know that in simply supported beam, bending stress will be dictated by equation called M by I is equal to sigma upon Y. From that, we have found out this equation clear which is z is equal to i by y which can be represented ultimately in terms of stress which is m by z which is wl by 1 upon 6 bt square so ultimately our bending stress in the case of lip spring is 6 wl upon bt square so ultimately that is our stress acting upon our body next thing to find that limiting deflection we have this for cantilever beam, deflection is as we have uh, write down here or we have here is WL cube upon 3EI where W is load acting on that, L is effective length, E is elastic modulus and I is nothing but moment of inertia. From that we can finally equation uh, in terms of load which is 4WL cube upon upper EBT cube that is in, in the terms of load. And in terms of stress, it is three, 2 by 3 sigma L cube upon E T. Clear? That is R in the case of uh, stress as well as deflection. So, this is equation for cantilever beam. We have found out two equations, one for stress and one for deflection. Now, let's move on to by find, find out depends on 
by considering it as simply supported beam. By considering it as a simply supported beam, we have this length is 2L, load is acting 2W. So ultimately stress will be nothing but the same stress which is acting on uh, our cantilever beam here, but deflection will going to be different. Why? First, deflection in the case of simply supported beam is WL cube upon 48 EI, where W is our TW, L is 2L. So ultimately, we will have our equation in terms of uh, deflection equation in terms of load, which is WL cube upon 3 EI. So from this equation, we can uh, understand this that our deflection will mainly depend on length as well as load acting upon that. Clear? I hope you got this idea. Once again, let's repeat this. Uh, equation for the simply supported beam stress will be same as for cantilever beam which is uh, 6WL upon BT square and deflection will be different which is WLQ upon 3EI. I hope you got this point. Clear? But in the case of example, we will consider it is as a cantilever beam because stress is same, so the deflection will going to be different. Clear? So here in this case, when I am differentiating that or I am parting this different uh, simply sorry cantilever beam in n number of layers, or I am considering it as a n number of lips. Clear? Then the stress will be divided by n. So ultimately, stress will be divided those all the strips clear so let's consider for our lip spring even in the case of lip spring total stress will be distributed to our lip spring each and every leaf but what is the different case if the length is different then stress will going to be different clear in this case in this particular cantilever beam the length is same so the stress will not going to be same clear also the deflection will be the difference if the length Length is different, then deflection also different. Clear? So, while considering it as a lip spring, we have to provide certain modification according to our requirement in our cantilever beam. Clear? Here in this case, cantilever beam is purely acting as a single beam. Even after we are differentiating in n number of lips, we have the same length. But as we know that in real life situation, uh, lip spring has a different length for a different plates. Clear? So, stress will going to be different. Clear? Here we have divided that one stress divided by n as well as deflection by n. Clear? So, let's adopt this equation, this particular equation, stress and deflection for our lip spring. This is purely for cantilever beam. Now, go for lip spring. So, to make that modification, we have the same stress. We are, what we are going to make, we are going to have the different length and we will adopt it to that clear so here let's consider this as i am telling you clear what is the criteria to adopt this the first criteria is this stress in first lip is 50 percent more than stress in gradual lips so uh, we can also say that stress in first lip is 1.5 times more than gradual lips clear so Let's have our equation here. You can see the first equation. This stress in first lift is 3 by 2 times of stress in gradual lift. Clear? From let's let's put this equation like this, where load will be the different length is same as we have considered in our gradual lift. So here what we are doing is if we are considering same length, then we will have the different stress. And if we are considering different stress, then we will have the different length. Clear? Okay, sorry, same length, then uh, different stress. So here we have same length for a different stress. That in that case, number of lips in first and load acting on that first lip will be the different. So equation will goes like this: six W F L upon N F B L B T square is equal to three by two of six W L upon N G B T square. Which is ultimately give us equation WF by WG, which is 3 by 2 NF by NG. I hope you got this point. Now, let's consider this. Total load will be WN, which is acting like WF plus WG. And total lifts will be NF plus NG. So, from those two considerations, once again, total load, total load, F plus WG and total number of lips will be NF plus NG. 
So from those two equation, we will have our equation for individual load, which is load acting on our gradual lift and load acting on our force lift. So in the case by substituting those equations, we will find this total load in terms sorry uh, gradual load in terms of total load will be 2 ng upon 3 nf plus 2 ng into w. At the same time, wf will be 2 nf upon 2 ng plus uh, 3 nf into w. This two are this two are our equation for our gradual lift as well as uh, front lift. Clear? So this two equation will going to going to give us a load in front lift and load in gradual lift. So ultimately we can find stress according to these two equations. Now let's put this two values of load in terms of our stress. As we have to find ultimately all we have to find is stress and deflection which is our maximum deflection which is called as our maximum deflection. So first our load in this case is first our load in this case will be sigma f which is w in terms of wf which is ultimately come uh, come out it as a 18 wf upon bt square 2 ng upon 3 ny as well as wg will be 12 wl upon bt square 2 ng plus 3 ny these two will always going to so what you are going to use even in examples also this two equation will going to be applicable in example we don't have to apply those, uh, that equation of 6WL, but we will going to apply this equation even if, if they haven't provided us any number of lips or anything. So we have to have this equation and now let's find the maximum deflection. So as we I have uh, uh, discussed in previous session that maximum deflection will be exerted on force lip because it will comes under maximum amount of stress. That's why. So we will find that deflection only in first lift. So ultimately deflection on that first lift will be del W L cube upon E B T square 2 N G upon 3 N F. So to find that maximum deflection, we will have this equation in example. So this two X three example will help us to find out our design of our lip swing. I hope you got this each and every point in our design of the lip spring. If you are having any doubt regarding to this session, you can directly ask me or contact me. Clear this this particular session I have taken is from totally from the machine design, but uh, by RS Kurmi, you can take it from Vivi Bandari as well as RV Gupta from Satya Prakashan. If you are having any doubt, you can directly contact me, ask me. I'm uh, ending here. Thank you. Thank you so much.